Hello and welcome to part two of my paint swatch videos. Now straight on to the deep yellows and oranges now. I've got this first one from M. Graham's Indian Yellow. Really vibrant yellow. Strong and intense, very pigmented as all M. Graham's usually are and it just looks like sunsets and reminds me of organic egg yolks <laughs> but a lovely lovely vibrant colour yeah with the reddish undertones there its chemical name is isoindolanone yellow it has excellent light fastness and it's moderately staining and that one is semi-transparent and so the one next door winds are orange now this one is semi-opaque yeah proper orange now and this is an azo orange Very light fast and staining as well as most of them are. Yeah, a lovely nice mid orange there. And next one we've got a Schmincke translucent orange. And this one is semi transparent. So Good for glazing. And this one is made from a pyrrole pigment, as um, a lot of the orange and red shades are made from a group of pigments called the pyrroles. And they're modern pigments. And discovered in the 1980s there. it's called translucent orange by Schmincke but other brands call it transparent pyrrole orange and yes makes some lovely brown colours mixed with Windsor Violet um, a nice glowing colour that one. Next door we've got the Windsor Orange Red Shade. Also a pyrrole pigment. And this one is really vibrant, rich colour. Very strong. It reminds me of those crocosmias. It's also semi opaque, like the Windsor Orange there. It's very intense. I do find it a little on the flat side, but it is a strong, clean colour. Next, we've got we've got Scarlet Lake by Windsor Newton. Nice strong colour there. Semi transparent. And the lakes are organic pigments um, made from plants, but they are unstable, so they have to go through a chemical process called laking, and that makes them stable enough to be used as paints and then the next one we've got is a, a vermilion hue this one is by De La Rowney I don't have many De La Rowney paints but just a few 
but look how rich and deep this one is. It's, this is a proper mid-shade red now. Really good, really vibrant. And yeah, definite, definitely a primary red there. Semi-transparent. Other names are Pyrrole Scarlet, so another Pyrrole pigment. And this one has excellent light fastness, very staining. Um, the genuine vermilion pigment was really toxic and it was made from a powdered mineral called cinnabar, which contains mercury. So yeah, not ideal to have on your paint palette. And next we've got the cadmium red, a Winsor Newton cadmium red. And being a cadmium, it's obviously opaque. And there are the toxicity issues or environmental issues of having the heavy metal in there. And I would see this vermilion hue as being a really good alternative. But you can get that really deep. And it tints out okay. I didn't mention as well that there are a range of um, cadmium hues out now. I know in Winsor Newton and Daniel Smith, maybe with other brands, I'm not sure, but I've never tried any of the cadmium hues. So I'm, I'm quite happy with all the paints I've got now. And this one is my alternative to cadmium red. But that said, for the cadmiums, excellent light fastness unlike some of the other red pigments, like the nat floral reds, which are very dubious with the light fast. Next we've got the Daniel Smith Pyroline Scarlet. And, yes, it's a dull, dusky scarlet Yes, it's quite a moody colour. This is this one is less light fast. Speaking about the light fastness, but I've not done a test on it. It's probably the same light fastness as the the PY three there, so still okay to use, I think. And. Uh, the pyrilines are another modern group of um, pigments that I like. Ooh. Next we've got an M. Graham quinacridone red. And this is a very intense red. Let's get that more in very transparent coral red very staining and and it, this is my first of my quinacridones here and the quinacridones are another group of modern pigments Yeah, so these quinacridones, they were first recognised as useful paints in the 1950s, so have been around a little while and so useful for the botanical artist. And uh, Sennelia Red, another pyrrole pigment. Look at that rich. And this one is transparent. Whereas a lot of the pyrrole pigments are semi-opaque. Yes, that's a lovely and rich, bright cherry red hue there.
And next we have Windsor Red, which is the same pigment and pretty much the same as Sennelier's, perhaps slightly cooler or bluer. Um, yeah, very similar. Oh, and this one is semi-opaque, whereas the Sennelier one is um, transparent. So you can see that's ever so slightly bluer there, but they're very similar in the mass tone. Yeah, and so moving on, we've got uh, Windsor Red Deep next, another pyrrole pigment. Again, it's semi-opaque, like most of them. Nice, dark, deep-toned red, quite moody. There. Apparently it doesn't have as good light fast as others, but I'm, I have done a light fast test on it and it turned out okay for me. So, all good. And next we've got a Daniel Smith red called Anthraquinoid Red. And this is a gorgeously rich, luminous, transparent, what I call a luscious red. Really lovely. Yes, vibrant and luminous. I think it would be good for uh, glazing because of its transparency. And so PR177 is a late, another lake pigment and it's a chemical cousin of alizarin, which we've got next door. And alizarin crimson here is obviously the really fugitive colour and but look how gorgeous it is such a luscious gorgeous colour very transparent so excellent for glazing but because of its uh, fugitive nature I would only ever use it in a sketchbook unfortunately or for reproductions at, um, but what a lovely colour. So yeah, the traditional al alizarin here is made from the root of the madder plant, um, just like rose madder as well. And madder was used as far back as ancient Egypt as a fabric dye. So yeah, brilliant. Um, but like I said, I never use it because of the fugitive nature of it. But we do have this permanent alizarin now here. This is actually the old formula by Winsor Newton. And I do I believe they've got a new formula out now, which is just the PR209, which is the Quin Red there. Um, but I've got this old formula, which has this PRNA. It's a quinacridone that was which um, has not been assigned a number for some reason. And I, it's a quinacridone and pyrolidone. I hope I've said that right. And I don't know what the new formula is like, but is it a close enough match, do you think? Quite close. transparent it just doesn't have that deep glow uh, in fact I think this anthraquinoid red which is the cousin is actually looking a bit more like a alizarin to me and if we come in with a bit of a glaze on top it's slightly redder isn't it but I can see that that now you can see the Quin Red in there. 
next we've got this Schmincke colour um, Permanent Carmine um, another quinacridone so tra um, but this one by Schmincke is less transparent so but then it does in tints it's fine but I'm not sure why and um, yes yeah, so it's unusual for a quinacridone that being semi opaque look you can see it's a little bit more opaque but not too bad I've been meaning to get the one by Winsor Newton now. Um, Winsor Newton's Permanent Carmen, which is transparent and it's made with a PRNA. Um, but I'm yet to get that one. And um, traditional genuine Carmen was made from crushed insects and, and cochineal beetles. Um, that were found on the prickly pear cactus and so yeah fortunately not anymore though <laughs> okay well that's the end of part two if you can see any colors that i don't have here that you think would be good for botanical watercolors drop me a comment below because i'd be really interested to know and Okay, part three coming soon. Um, bye for now.